Hi there, I'm Robert and you're watching Suburban Preppers. Now as preppers we have most things covered. We often have a good supply of food, water, medical items, if it's permitted in your jurisdiction, also weapons or self-defense items. Just to clarify, in the UK we are not permitted under laws to have items for self-defense or to use as weapons. Just want to get that out of the way and make sure that we stay legal. But one thing that some preppers often overlook is their pets. On some of the prepper groups I'm on, on Facebook, I've raised pets and I was quite alarmed at the amount of people who actually had never given a thought to their pets needs during any sort of event, whether that be full-blown SHTF or even just a a localised incident where perhaps you're stuck at home. In COVID, for example, we were encouraged to stay indoors and not go out if it wasn't essential. Obviously, I know pet care and pet needs is an essential item. However, you know what I mean. If, for example, there was a localised incident and the advice was to stay indoors until further notice, if you didn't have the items for your pet, they would soon start to suffer. This could be anything from food, water, flea treatment, any medication that they need. But yeah, pets are often sometimes sadly overlooked. So just quickly, I've got a few not so fun facts to share with you. During the, the Balkan crisis in the early 1990s in Eastern Europe, it was rumored that people were catching dogs and cats and killing them and using them as a food source you know you want to make sure that your pet does not become a food source for somebody else or at least myself personally i want to make sure that that does not happen to my pets my dogs and a little bit further back at the outbreak of the second world war here in the uk people were encouraged to send their dogs for destruction within the first 12 months of war it's estimated that between half a million and three quarters of a million domestic cats and dogs were destroyed on the suggestion of the government who said it was the kindest thing for them as an animal lover and who has three dogs plus my daughter has a dog so essentially we have four dogs I would want to avoid this at all costs so with that in mind what can we do to make sure that we prepare for our pets now everyone's situation is going to be different depending on what pet or pets that you have. I'll just take my personal circumstances into account for the purposes of this video. I have, like I've said, three dogs, plus also my daughter has a dog. Her dog is often here with my dog. So let's say I have four dogs, just for argument's sake. Water. So one thing that we all should have as preppers is a good supply of water on hand at all times. For our family, we buy these five litre bottles. We buy these on the basis of one bottle per person per day. That is for drinking, cooking, cleaning, brushing teeth, etc. When you buy one of these, also buy a smaller two litre bottle for your dog. Now, obviously dogs don't need as much care as humans. They are quite hardy animals. They can drink puddle water and be absolutely fine. But still, I'd rather they had fresh water to drink. They don't need bathing, obviously brushing their teeth or, or whatever. Not like humans. So for my dogs, one of these bottles would probably be sufficient each day for all of the four dogs combined. Pet food. So like us humans, your pets will need a good supply of food. For our dogs, we feed them the, the large sacks of dry complete food and also the, the tinned meat. So there is 12 cans in this, in this slab here. This would last our dogs four days with the, the dry food complementing it. But what we do for our dogs, we have one large dog and then three smaller dogs. The large dog gets a tin by himself. That's Snoop, if anyone's interested. And then the three smaller dogs We'll split two tins between the three of them. Like I say, Snoop is a lot bigger than the other three dogs. So his dietary needs are a lot more. But like I say, two tins split between the three dogs would be sufficient for them. 
as long as they're also supplementing it with the, the dried food. This alone would not be enough for the dogs, they, they'd end up starving. This dry complete food, we have that always at home ready for the dogs and then we, we give them the meat once a day. So there's no need to not continue that. If you have one month supply of food, one week, three months, one year, whatever you have for yourself and your family, make sure that you have items for your pets as well to match that same amount of time. Treats. Just as us humans enjoy a sweet treat every now and again, animals are the same. So why not store some boxes of dog treats or cat treats or whatever animal you have in with your preps. They're just a little treat for the, for the animal, just a little pick me up or, or whatever. They'll be getting stressed just the same as you are if there's any sort of event happening. And just a little something like a treat or whatever, just just give them a little kind of sense of normality just to, just to settle them. So we've covered food and drinks for pets if there's any sort of event. And as I mentioned earlier specifically, if you can't venture outside for whatever reason. However, like us humans, what goes in your pets still has to come back out and you need a way of dealing with the mess. Toilet needs and sanitation. Once upon a time for puppies, you just used to put newspaper all over the floor. But now things seem to have moved along where we have these, it's a very big bag, excuse me. We have these disposable puppy pads. I have one here from the, the pack that we have opened. I bought this pack just for the, the video, but they're handy to have in store. So we have these absorbent puppy pads here. They are approximately two foot by two foot. Spread a couple of these out on the floor. It won't take long for your dog to remember back to the days of being a puppy. And they'll start to do the, the business on the, the pads. With that, you can use dog poo bags or even nappy sacks, disposable nappy liner sacks to, to pick, pick the dog muck and seal it, making sure that you wash your hands afterwards and getting that ready to be disposed of the same as you would with your human waste. My plan personally is having the, the pads out, having maybe it's half a dozen out so there's a, a good section on the floor ready for the dogs if they need to go to the toilet but they can't go outside. So with the puppy pads we plan on changing them up to three times a day. Obviously if we need more we change it. We we won't sit in a, a dirty, smelly house, you know, it's, you don't want to take risks with your, your hygiene. But our plan is up to three times a day, starting with fresh pads in the morning. Obviously, once they're, they're used, getting them bagged up into a, a garbage sack, get the, the sack tied off, get fresh pads back down. And again, through the, the day, also having a supply of bleach, to add to water to make sure that we can clean the floor thoroughly just again just to keep on top of hygiene just to make sure that we don't pick up any infections or bugs medication and treatments like us humans unfortunately our pets sometimes pick up something that they'd rather not have whether that be an illness an infection or even just common fleas post event you're still going to need a way to treat this so things like Flea drops, these are for flea and ticks rather than just fleas, sorry. This is flea powder that we use at home. However, you can get the aerosol spray. The flea powder needs to be vacuumed up afterwards. You put, sprinkle it down, leave it for an hour or so and vacuum it up afterwards. The aerosol, you just spray it straight on. Then we have this for one of our dogs, again Snoop. He has a bit of a skin condition so we have this spray it just eases the, the skin condition for him and also like us humans sometimes dogs get a little bit smelly deodorizing spray it, it's not an essential but we have it so that pretty much concludes today's video where we've discussed prepping for your pets if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up if you're not already a subscriber please do subscribe I'd really appreciate it. It helps this channel grow and it lets the YouTube algorithm know that you're enjoying the video and to show it to more like-minded people. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section below. 
Let me know what you do for prepping for your pets or if you'd never considered it, if this video has been helpful. Again, let me know your thoughts. With that, I'll say thanks for watching and bye for now.